Check, 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 one, two, one, two. What's up, y'all? Yo, uh, welcome back to the studio. Um, this time, I'm trying to do a tutorial on uh, Serato um, music preparation. So, I know a lot of you guys have noticed all the additional features that are coming to Serato every, you know, every update. So I kind of want to show you guys what that was all about and how I prepare my tracks. It's, it ain't as easy as just downloading stuff and shoving it in there. I kind of want to give a breakdown of how it is that I particularly do it. So, um, yeah, so I have um, a list of, uh, of different uh, steps to take in order to make sure that your Serato playlist is pristine. So I'll go ahead and uh, go through some of that with you. So let's start from the very, very, very beginning. Let's um, let's pretend that you that this is your computer and you've just downloaded this stack of tracks right here. Right. So these are brand new tracks. I'm prepared. Um, you didn't you didn't get them from a record pool um, with that. Sometimes those tracks already come pre prepared with, you know, cues and loops and stuff. Let's pretend that these are from, you know, you purchased these songs or however you got them. They are raw and they need to be prepared. So the first thing I like to do is um, configure how I'm going to set up my Serato. So usually and typically what I would recommend is that you take a look at your music folder. So in this case, um, if I go to my music folder, it's empty because I don't actually use this computer for DJing, but this is where my crates live in my other computer. And it makes it very handy because if you have all your tracks in this particular section here called music, then you can just copy your music folder to whatever computer and transfer your whole set. and. There's going to be a video coming on how to do that, how to back up your library and then how to load your library into a new computer when you're ready to, you know, either get new computers or your computer broke or whatever it may be. And it's very important to keep a backup of your music, especially if you're going to spend as much time as I do preparing this stuff. So I'll show you that this is my preferred method. This is where I think your music should live. It should not live on an external hard drive because then it's going through um, some type of USB port and there's going to be delay, there's going to be lag on that. So you don't want to do that. You want it to go direct. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, once we know where you want your tracks, which obviously this is recommended, the second step is to um, take your tracks, put them in a new folder. Typically, um, you can label this whatever it is to help you remind yourself that this is this particular batch of music that you downloaded in this particular time. So for the sake of making things simple, let's just say that this is today's date. Right? And then we're going to say um, reggae hip hop dump. Something like this. So the date and reggae hip hop dump. Let's just call it that because this is what some of the stuff is. So now we're going to take our tracks, throw them in there. And then we're going to drag that folder over to our music folder. So let's do, go ahead and do that. All right. Now we got that in our music folder, our main music folder, whether it's a MacBook or a Windows computer, you've got that into your main music folder. Next thing. Um, you're going to want to open up Serato. Um, I'll have a tutorial coming soon on how to set up Serato correctly for the best performance, depending on your equipment, of course. But um, typically, yeah, you're going to you're going to want you're going to want everything. You're going to want it so that when you go DJ, your set is seamless and you don't have to do as much thinking. That's the best way to do this. So, OK, we've got everything set up here. First step is first, we go to your music folder and we can see the, the folder is there. So this is not the folder in, in the way that your music is going to live. We're going to recategorize it and I'll show you how. So we're going to take this for the sake of preparation and 
drag it over to the crate section here. And when you drop it, you'll notice that it'll automatically create a crate for you and have your music in there. All right. So now we're going to go into the folder itself. We'll minimize the file section. And uh, we're going to want to click and highlight the whole rack of tracks. And then we're going to want to drag that into this analyze file section. What this is going to do is it's going to check your tracks and do all the work for you of individually, basically virtually playing them, building uh, wave files for them. Um, and you'll be able to see your your um, your waves will load up faster. The ID3 stuff is going to correct itself. Um, it's going to tell you the key. It's going to tell you the BPM or an approximation of what it is. If you play only house music, um, I would recommend that you limit right here. There's a little cog wheel here you can click the drop down menu there and limit um your tracks to be let's say you're a house dj you can limit them from 110 to 150 and let's say you're a hip-hop strict dj that you can you know limit them however you feel I, i'm an all-rounding dj so i i don't have any limits to how my tracks are analyzed and then i manually go in there and correct them as i go along so i'll kind of show you what that looks like as well um for example, while this is analyzing, you can play tracks. So we'll go ahead and play one here that isn't. These two have already been pre-prepared. Um, we'll go ahead and load up this track. Uh, and we'll play it. So um, we want to find the first beat. Step one for me is always uh, set up cues. Okay, so we know what the drop sounds like, so let's go back to the beginning. To beat one. Most of the time, uh, Serato does a pretty good job of pre-analyzing it. Hit control one, and you got your first cue. We'll call that uh, synth intro. You double click the, the uh, cue that you just created. It allows you to rename it. Very important. I rename every single one of my cues. So this, let's just call that the drop. So we'll go here, we'll hold the wave to the line. Control two, second cue point. We'll call that drop. So now you can see. We got two cues. Okay, what's the next step? Um, the next step for me is to um, select the color of the type of file that this is so in my hip-hop crates it depending on the type of hip-hop um, I give it a different color so we'll just say that this is like a darker sounding track so we'll give it a purple color and the next thing we check is that the BPM is accurate so 70 is accurate for this tempo so I'm gonna go ahead and lock it so you hit control and you click right there and then now you've locked that track into place so now that you've got your track locked, the sec, the third thing is, is how, how are you going to mix in? So I'm going to mix in using these cues, right? That's how I'm coming into the track. But how am I going to mix out? So the way I want to mix out, I like that bass line. So we'll find the beginning of that. That's it right there. So I'm going to hit control three. I'm going to pause the track. I'm going to call that Q loop out and then I'm going to add an eight bar loop and I'm going to listen to it and make sure it's, it's, it's good. It's not. So, and this is because my Serato hasn't been set up on this computer. This is for the sake of, um, you know it's trying to quantize my my loop or whatever so let's turn that uh, sync mode off 
snap to beat grid. Just turn those features off. We'll go ahead and turn on the loop. There we go. Now we got an eight bar loop. I'm happy with that. So now we're gonna add that to this. We're just gonna hit the plus on the first loop bar here. And we're gonna name that loop out because that's what we're doing with it. What we're doing here is we're creating a way for us to exit the track because um, you need an entry point and an exit point is how I like to describe it. Go ahead and lock that into place. Just like we locked this here. You just go ahead and click the lock so that you can't, uh, so it doesn't get accidentally deleted. And now you don't run out of track when it's time to exit your track. Um, doing this is going to save you. Is you just, it's, you're going to be so much happier having these tools. And Serato provides these tools for a reason. Um, so now the final step of preparing a track is figuring out where it's going to go. So let's pretend that I already had some crates set up here. So um, we're going to call the first crate um, Hip Hop. And typically I actually don't... Um, set up crates by genre uh, because I'm more of a uh, I, I play in between different things very often so I don't do that but let's for the sake of this demonstration say that there's two crates one called hip hop one called reggae so we'll go back to our preparation um, crate and we'll drag that into the hip hop crate because that's a hip hop track so now we go in there and there it is so we'll go back to our preparation crate. This is one I had already pre-prepared earlier. So this is a hip hop track, so we'll throw it into hip hop. This is reggae. We'll throw it into the reggae crate. reggae let's pretend that we've already got all these set up exactly how I explained you can see how this is time consuming and it's not as easy as just grabbing these tracks and throwing them in it takes a little bit of time per, per track to do this um, to get it right I spent hours preparing all these tracks making sure they're good so let's do a few more Okay, so now that we have enough songs separated, let's pretend that we've complete com completed our whole our whole new dump of music. We go into our hip hop crate, we go into our reggae crate, and they're there. Okay, so now what do we do with this? So simple. What's going on here is one track living in our master music folder here is now prepared and the ID3s are prepared in Serato and all of this information is actually saved directly onto the MP3 which is very awesome which means wherever you drag the MP3 now it will have this information the next thing we're doing is dragging them and creating crates this is important because this is how you prevent your uh, your crates from having duplicates um, and this is also how you prevent um, your computer from using up too much memory unnecessarily one track works in many different crates. If you, if there was a track in here that we wanted in two crates, we would take it, we put it in the other crate, and now that same track is in both crates. And that's okay. Um, because sometimes there's a song that works in two different places. You gotta have two, two of those versions. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's let's say that we're completely, we're, we're complete with our project. We just go ahead and delete our preparation crate. That crate will forever live in our actual music folder here, but that's not going to be introduced into our Serato. In our Serato is going to look like this. So we'll have two crates, and those crates will have those tracks in there, which is very awesome. So now we're ready to go DJ, and we're ready to play by BPM and everything. So the second step, I guess, to making sure that this is all good to go is um, obviously your actual Serato settings 
for your for your library, which is, are are very important. Typically, for me, um, w the way that uh, the this view here is set up is very important. So I'll go ahead and right click here on BPM. I'll click on the BPM so that it analyzes them and organizes them from the lowest value to the highest value. The next thing I'll do is right click it and I'll remove all of the ones I don't want. So I don't like it. This comes enabled with many others that I've already removed. But typically, <clears throat> I limit mine to plays, um, length, key, BPM, album artist. That's it. <clears throat> By doing this, you you select your view how you want it. Uh, I I typically will play put plays way at the end here. I'll extend the song a little bit more. Um, the album I'll reduce it a little bit more. So this is this is how I like to organize mine. It looks good this way to me. So now now that we have our whole crate selected, everything ready to go, we play it. It's good. The next thing we have to do. Let's go over to our settings. And obviously your DJ preferences will save this for another video on how to actually take care of this. But um, for your library itself, just because it's related to this, um, you can select what color you want your track to be um, when once it's played. I honestly am a fan of the old school green scratch live color. I don't know why they went away from that and made it blue. I think the blue is really whack. Um, and then most importantly, if you use your iTunes library, you're going to want to have this checked. I do not. So I uncheck that. We don't need the iTunes library, um, showing up in our, uh, in our crate box. Um, if you don't use any of these mu music streaming services, uh, go ahead and uncheck that as well. None of those will show up in your crate, uh, selection. Um, and then we also have sub crates um i use sub crates so i keep that selected and then you want to make sure you can actually physically see the text um typically i like to make mine a little larger because i have a 13 inch macbook pro and sometimes depending on how dark it is where you are you, you got to be able to see so i i bring up the font just a little bit um and yeah so this is some of the things that that are uh important to me when setting up our, our library I'll do another tutorial on how to actually set up Serato for it to be seamless and work like really legit. But that's it. That's it, y'all. Um, this is how I prepare tracks in Serato particularly. Um, I think it's the best way. <laughs> but um, let me know what you guys think. If, if there's anything I miss, if there's something that you do um, that you'd like to teach me, let me know. Um, for the most part, this is the best way for me. Um, I will make a video on how to transfer your library to a different computer or how to back it up correctly and how to reload it into a different PC once you, uh, you know, in case you have to do that. So uh, that's the next video coming up very soon. Um, stay tuned for that, guys. And as always, uh, stay chill and keep DJing.